Many horror movies out there have an incredible way of tricking our minds, making us believe we know exactly what is going on throughout the movie. And then the final act rolls around and it is revealed that we actually had no idea all along. They throw an epic twist in there or a fake out, taking us completely by surprise. These are the top five biggest horror movie fake outs. Let's jump in. Now I warn you there are gonna be a lot of spoilers. I'm quite literally ruining all of these movies for you. Coming in at number five with April Fool's Day. Now this 19 86 mystery slasher took everyone by surprise when it first came out, mostly due to its intense and shocking ending. Directed by Fred Walton, this horror starred the likes of Thomas F. Wilson, Deborah Foreman, Griffin O'Neill, and Amy Steele, with it following a group of college students who go on vacation to an island estate during April Fool's Day weekend. However, it's not the fun weekend they were all looking for, because quite quickly an unknown assailant begins to attack. Now, April Fool's Day was released in the height of the slasher genre. Genre. And this holiday themed film got in on the action, with it following the standard slasher conventions. College students, weekend getaway, unknown killer, debauchery, and fun. Now, each student begins to get killed off one by one in a very grisly manner, with us attempting to guess who the killer could potentially be. However, this is where the greatest fake out comes into play. The killer is Muffy, the owner of the house, and during the final climactic scene between herself and the lone survivor, another twist is thrown into the mix. The lone survivor runs into the living room only for it to be revealed that all of her murdered friends are very much alive, joking and yelling in unison, April Fools. Yeah, ridiculous, but definitely a fake out we did not see coming. Before we jump into number four, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, it really helps us out a lot. In at number four, we have Scream. I think we can all agree at this point that Scream had one of the best fake outs in horror movie history. And if you don't believe me, you'll see why in a minute. Released in 1996 and directed by Wes Craven, Scream stars the likes of Nev Campbell, Courtney Cox, Rose McGowan, Drew Barrymore, David Arquette, Skeet Ulrich, and Matthew Lillard, with the movie following Sidney Prescott, a high school student in Woodsboro, California, who is still processing her grief after the brutal murder of her mother. However, more murder is incoming, with a mysterious killer in a Halloween costume named Ghostface roaming the town and killing off Sidney's friends one by one. Now, there are a couple of fakeouts in this movie, and both as surprising as the last. To begin, the poster of Scream has Drew Barrymore's face on it. At the time of release, she was the biggest name actor in the movie, and with her name attached, they could secure funding and attract viewers, and it definitely worked. However, they tricked us all by having Drew Barrymore's character, Casey, last only about eight minutes right at the beginning of the movie, before she is brutally murdered, surprising absolutely everyone. Throughout the movie, we play the guessing game of which character could in fact be the killer. Do we know them? Is it someone we thought we could trust? It turns out there isn't just one killer, there are two. One is revealed to be Sydney's boyfriend, Billy, and the other is the funny guy of the movie, Stu. They then reveal that they murdered Sydney's mother because she was having an affair with Billy's father. Billy, I could guess, being the killer, but Stu was certainly a curveball. Honestly, Scream is perhaps the most fun slasher out there, with it making fun of horror movie tropes along the way and not taking itself too seriously. Coming in at number three, we have The Visit. Look, people really love to on this movie, and that's mostly because it's written and directed by M. Night Shyamalan. But I truly loved this film. I thought it was funny and at moments truly terrifying. And on top of that, it has one hell of a twist. Now, during this time, Shyamalan was on the outs with him making a few dud movies. However, when he hit with this extremely low budget horror movie, he took everyone by surprise in the best way possible. Released in 2015, the visit centers around two siblings, Becca and her younger brother, Tyler. They live with their single mother who ended up leaving home at the age of 15 and has an estranged relationship with her parents. Obviously, the kids want to know more about their grandparents, so they find them online and their grandparents invite them to spend a weekend at their farm while their mother goes away with her boyfriend. So the kids head off to the farm with aspiring filmmaker Becca deciding to film the entire thing and turn it into a documentary. However, once they arrive, peculiar things begin to take place, making them question who their grandparents really are. Now, what begins as sweet and charming with the grandparents baking cookies and the group going on hikes quickly descends into horror, with the grandparents beginning to act violent and strange, with the kids waking up to the grandmother roaming around the home, clawing at the doors and exhibiting peculiar behavior, including chasing the kids under the house in one of the more terrifying scenes. Now, the twist is an absolute doozy in the movie, with it being revealed that the grandparents aren't actually their grandparents, and they are instead escaped mental patients who want to kill Becca and Tyler. 
Yikes. Coming in at number two, we have Sleepaway Camp. Now this 80s slasher is known for having one of the most shocking and intense twists in horror movie history. You'll find out why in a few moments. Released in 1983 and directed by Robert Hiltzik, Sleepaway Camp is a slasher that tells the story of a young girl, Angela, and her cousin, Ricky, who were sent away to summer camp. However, the camp quickly becomes the site of a series of grisly murders, not long after they arrive. Angela is a very reserved girl, and we find out this is due to the trauma she suffered when she was younger after watching her father and twin brother get killed in a boating accident. Hence why Angela now lives with her aunt and cousin, Ricky. Once arriving at the camp, Angela is instantly bullied by fellow campers and even some of the counselors. And then this is when people begin turning up brutally murdered. So what is actually going on at the camp? Well, the big twist is that Angela is the killer herself, but it doesn't end there. She isn't just the killer, but she is actually her brother, Peter, who was raised as a girl after the death of the real Angela, with his aunt already having a little boy and so desperately wanting a little girl. That is insane. There's one twist absolutely no one saw coming, that's for sure. And finally, in at number one, we have Orphan. Excuse my language, but Orphan is an absolutely batch crazy movie in the best way possible, and I remember following its release, people were losing their minds over this movie. Released in 2009 and directed by Juame Colette Serra, Orphan is a psychological horror starring the likes of Vera Farmiga, Peter Sarsgaard, and Jimmy Bennett, with the movie centering on a couple who, following the death of their unborn child, decide to adopt a nine-year-old girl, a very mysterious nine-year-old girl who won't seem to remove the scar from around her neck. Now, as soon as Esther arrives at the home, things begin to fall apart for the family. Family. She begins exhibiting strange behavior, such as watching her new parents have sex, killing an injured bird, and even hurting a classmate at the park. She even goes on to kill the head of her former orphanage. Scary stuff. So what is troubling this child? That's the question. Why is she so disturbed that she has to commit all of these violent acts? Now, this movie had a twist that left every single person in the movie theater in shock. And spoilers ahead for those who haven't seen the movie, but it turns out Esther isn't a nine-year-old girl after all. She is actually a third 33 year old woman who suffers from a hormone disorder, allowing her to disguise herself as a child and commit sadistic acts on unsuspecting victims. Prior to moving in with her new family, she had murdered at least seven other people, including her former adoptive family, after she failed to seduce the husband. And on top of that, the scarf she wears around her neck, and that is to cover the scars she got when trying to break out of a straitjacket at the hospital. Absolutely no one saw that twist coming. Well, there we have it. Do you guys agree with our list? Were there any horror movie fake outs that we missed? Leave us all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below and perhaps we can do a part two. Before I go though, I just want to respond to a few comments from one of our last videos. Top five scary true stories from North America. Stuart said, I think Lucy looks like she's in her early twenties. Facts. Well, thank you, I appreciate that. I'm actually in my late 20s, but someone in that video thought I was in my late 30s. So, I mean, depending on the lighting, I could be any age. In this lighting, I look my age. But I'm 28 and don't forget it. I'm not 38. Sorcery the Grey said, Kennedy exorcism happened in England, not North America. I know, I realized my mistake when I was filming the video and I had written that it was in England and the video was about North America. So I understand my mistake and I apologize for my mistake. Sometimes when you script so many videos, you forget what you're even scripting. Last Toth said, Lucy, I want to wish you a very happy 28th birthday a little early. I also have a B day on the 25th. Respect, roses for you, enjoy your day. Thank you. Um, what's the date today? Well, happy early birthday to you, but when this video goes live, your birthday will have been. My birthday's already been since as I'm filming this video. But thank you for the birthday wish. Beats World said, Happy New Year, Lucy. Greetings from Scotland. Thank you. Happy New Year to you too. And greetings from Toronto. <laughs> what the fuck did I say like that? Sprite 2021 said, 400 a night to sleep in an old house where people were murdered. No, thank you. Honestly, I wouldn't sleep in a murderer house for free. I wouldn't sleep where anyone's been killed for free, let alone 400 a night. Screw that. And on that note, if you haven't already, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, and until next time, I'll see you later. All of our murdered friends. Oh, people are loud in the hallway, mother That is to scuff- That is to cover the scars- That is to scuff- Oh, you f Thank you, happy new- Oh my god, I'm having a f Hell of a time over here. Joss, can you hear me struggling? Thanks. Thanks. I've got another video after this. <laughs> I don't think I, I need to pee as well.